Hey, this is Minister Chris. Minister Christopher Harrell with uh, Make It Impact Ministries here. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, maybe a topic that may be a little too hard for you to swallow. It's a topic that took me a while to really, really, really digest. Why? Because it, it, it came against everything that I've been taught, came against everything that I knew to be true. And, 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 and the question is this. Are Christians commanded to tithe? Now, when I ask you that, was the first thought came, that comes to your mind? For those of you who've been in church, those of you who might think you have a background about tithes and offerings, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'm assuming, yes. The answer will be yes. We've, all, we all, we've always been taught to tithe. We've always been told that that's what God says. We've seen scriptures in the Old Testament that uh, Malachi 3.8, when a man robbed God, Yet where you robbed me, my tithes and offerings. We we we've, we've seen principles. We've seen people, the old patriarchs, uh, uh, giving ten percent here. We we seen we we've seen that in the Old Testament, right? And so, uh, quite naturally, a uh, majority of our churches today they teach that as a commandment from God. But here here is the thing, guys, and, and and this is what this is where you're gonna have to really wrap your brain around this. This is where you're really going to have to pray and seek the truth. That's why I love uh, 2 Timothy 3.15 that we're here. God said, you know, present, present yourselves as a workman, you know, who, who can actually divide the word of truth, approve. So the key is that we need to be able to accurately divide the word of truth. And that's what I try to do in these videos, guys. I try to do this on, the, on these videos. Now, I'm going to give you this uh, an overview of this. I, talk, I talked about this more on my blog that I want you to go to. Plus, what I want you to do when you go to my blog, there's going to be, there's going to be something there from one of the most prominent ministers in the world. He did a sermon on this. I want you to download it. I want you to listen to it. And I, and, and, and I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to see what, what God reveals to you. I'm not going to share his name now, but at the end of this video, well, actually, if it's probably at the bottom of this link right now. If you want to right now, you can go ahead and click that link and go, and go watch it right now. Uh, but I want you to go. But the key thing is, because see, here's the deal. I don't want you taking my word to be true. Even though I don't, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. Because see, there are people out there who's going to look at me and say, hey, uh, he's just a, a young minister. You know, they're going to look at me like Timothy in the Bible. It's true. Uh, to this day here, I've been born again 12 years to the day that's recording this video. And I've actually been uh, in the ministry as a minister maybe about the last five years so so uh so it's gonna be always those who say oh he don't know he don't know what he's talking about well what makes someone a mature believer is not how long they've been in the faith it's not how long you've been going to church because 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 we got grown kids in the church right now we got people who've been in church 40 50 years and they can't get past john 3 16. they're still on milk because there's no growth to them so you can't judge someone by how long they've been saved or how long they've been in the ministry. It's, it's how productive they've been. What have they learned and attained through that time? What studies have they done? What has God revealed to them? How much time have they spent with God? You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Because that's the same thing that happened to Timothy. People were coming against Timothy because he was young in the faith. He was a young pastor. And Paul was telling him, don't worry about that. So, but I am going to have you go listen to someone who, who's been around ministering just as long as I've been around living. And he's a world-renowned minister, and so there are resources out there. But 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 here but here's the key. I'm, I'm gonna share this with you. Then I want you to go uh, to listen to his sermon. Uh, everything that that is commanded in the Old Testament, unless it is repeated in the New Testament, doesn't apply to the New Covenant Gentiles. In other words, Christians. And that's what we are. If you read the book of Acts and on and so on and so on, we are Gentiles. We are under the new covenant. And the conf confusion happens is that when, 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 when people misinterpret the Old Testament commands and want to apply it to the New Testament, want to apply it to the new covenant believers. And you can't do that because that's the case. Then you need to keep, keep you need to continue to honor the Sabbath on the Saturday. Uh, you need to quit wearing uh, polyester and wool 
a type of clothing. Uh, There's so many laws in the Old Testament that we don't recognize. You understand what I'm saying? Today. So we can't pick and choose. And I, I know some of you are saying, oh no, they talk about tithe in Genesis. Well, you're going to hear this on the sermon, but yeah, there are two references in Genesis. Uh, Abraham and uh, Jacob. There's your two references of the tithe or the tenth. But, as you, but I don't want to give so much of this sermon away. I want you to go listen to it. And I've done some other research too, but what you're going to see when you point out in these scriptures is that two references you're going to see there, but neither one of them were commanded to tithe. That was a cultural norm at that, at that particular time. This is before the law. And then you're going to see what it says under the law. The point is this, guys. We have to get to the point where we're no longer teaching tradition. You know, it's not any tradition. The reason why that is taught as a commandment of God, for the most part, is because of the ignorance of the Old Testament. Like I said, we confuse something that's called principles. No. Principle. We confuse these two. Principles and precepts. Two distinct different things. Principles and precepts. What's a precept? Precept is a law. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, something that's decreed. A commandment. Something that you're supposed to do. You see that, you know, the Ten Commandments or whatnot, and other commandments in the New Testament. The, uh, the two great, you know, uh, the two greatest commandments, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, these are precepts. So I can see, well, 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 preacher man, then what about the Old Testament? Is the Old Testament good for anything? Yes, it is. But number one, it gives you the history of God. It gives you the history of, of, of the chosen people uh, of Israel. And also, you take principles from it. You take principles. So, so you can take the principle of whatever um, a certain command is there that was commanded to who? The people of Israel at that time. You can't teach that. You can't teach a precept that was targeted toward the people of Israel at a, at a specific time for a specific purpose. You can't teach that and apply it to the, the Gentiles, to Christians of today. You can't teach that as a doctrine because it didn't apply to them. That was not the author's original intent and that was not how the audience originally received it. Now we get into something called hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the art and science of biblical interpretation. And one thing about reading the Bible, you got to keep everything in proper context. You always got to ask yourself, who is God? Oh, for, where is God? Who was the author talking to? What was going on at that particular time in that culture? And how did the original artist receive it? And, 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 and so when you're learning how to read the Old Testament with the New Testament, you have to realize that unless, again, unless you see something that's repeated in the New Testament, you're not obligated to keep it. You will find nowhere in the New Testament where Christians are commanded to tithe. Nowhere where they are commanded to tithe. We're told to give. We're told to give throughout. You give. Read 2 Corinthians 9. We're supposed to give. 2 Corinthians 8. Tithe. Think about it. Paul wrote half of the New Testament. Paul was a Jew of all Jews, a Hebrew of all Hebrews, a Pharisee of all Pharisees. He knew the law front to back. If the Gentile believers needed to know that they need to tithe and give an offering, why wouldn't Paul tell them that? Why wouldn't Peter tell them that, a Jew of all Jews? You will find nowhere in none of those writings that it commands, it commands them. The only place you see in the New Testament, you see a reference from it in the book of Hebrews, and it, all it is is a recap of what happened with Abraham and Melchizedek. It's a recap. It's not commanding you to do anything. You see it in the Gospels. When Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, when he, he was rebuking the Pharisees, right? He was saying the woes and all that kind of stuff. And, and Jesus said, 
yeah, you do good, you tie mint, you tie, you tie spices, you, you do this. He was giving a reference to it. And one thing that people miss, people miss this all day long, because they use certain scriptures out of context to justify that. A lot of, I've heard a lot of pastors do that, but they miss this whole point. Let me show you. Let me ask you this. When did the new covenant begin? Did it begin? Uh, before Jesus? Or at Jesus' birth? Or during his earthly ministry or after his resurrection and ascension. I'm spelling that right. I don't think I am, but y'all know what I mean. When did the new covenant begin? It began here. If we forget that Jesus was a Jew. Yes, Jesus was a Jew. And Jesus was under the law. He grew up under the law. He didn't live outside the law. He was a Jewish boy. He obeyed the laws. He did all the sacrifices that they had to do all the time. He did all those things that every little Jewish boy would do. So he grew up under the law. He grew up under the law of tithing. So, so when he confirmed tithing, he didn't, that wasn't him commanding the Gentiles to do that. And people missed that. You know, I missed that. Every church I've been a part of, I taught that because I thought that was doctrine. I thought that was the truth. It wasn't, you know, out of deceit. But here's the thing, here's the deal. God wants us to be a cheerful giver. See, the problem is that, when you go to my blog, you'll read this. The problem is that there are too many people that are uh, manipulating the tithe that make people feel guilty for not tithing. You know, they separate the tithers from the non-tithers. They put on big shows. They, you know, people get to jump, jump around and, and run laps and run parades inside the church. They do special offerings for the, for, for the so-called tithers. And it's a psychological thing what they're doing. It's a psychological thing. And what it does is that people who do not tithe, you're going to feel compelled to tithe. Why? Because you got a human, your human, your, your human nature wants to be accepted. Your human nature w wants to be uh, recognized. It's human nature to feel that way. And, 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 and pastors are doing that. You need to stop. Stop praying on people that way. You don't need to do that. We're taught to give. And you know what? Once you learn how to be a cheerful giver, you're going to give more than 10%. You're going to do way uh, uh, far and beyond that. But we got we to teach the doctrine as it should be taught. And here's, here's a nugget too. If you talk to a Jew, they would tell you they didn't tithe 10%. You talk to a Jew, and you're going to learn this in the lesson I'm going to send you to. They actually tithe over, uh, over 23%. So, so, so we're not even teaching that correctly. Tithe does mean tenth, but, uh, but a Jew did not tithe 10% of their, of their increase. They did over, over 23%. So, I want you to understand these things, God, when you, when you go and listen to the sermon. Because, I, 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 see, here's the deal. I'm not telling you guys this for you to quit giving. No, no, no. I'm telling you guys this because, see, we're set free in Christ. God said he wants a cheerful giver. He said, he said, you know, the word is pretty clear that we should give. And you know what? If you, if, 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 if you sow sparingly, well, you're going to reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you're going you're gonna to reap bountifully. That principle d doesn't go away. So this doesn't tell you, oh, no, now I should quit giving. No. If, in fact, you should pray about giving more. I'm telling you guys this because it's... I, we've been conditioned to think and we've been forced. I mean, I know when I first got involved in church, I didn't know what a tithe off of the, the gross or the net. I, I used to be scared and figured that I'm going to get cursed. Why? Because that's what he told us in Malachi 3.8. I'm cursed with the curse. 
even this whole nation. I'm cursed with the curse. Even though that verse had nothing to do with me. Had nothing to do with the Gentile Christians. That's talking about the people of Israel, but it was taught that no, this is you. You understand what I'm saying? And so what happens is, people are telling you that the reason why you, uh, things are not going well for you is because you're not tired and off your gross. Or the reason why your house isn't blessed is because you're not doing this. Well, you know what? That has nothing to do with it. Now, if you're not giving, that's totally different. Because the word is pretty clear, you know, give and it'll, it'll come back to you. You know, press down, shake together. You know, you do give and it will come back to you. So that principle holds true. So, no, I'm not telling you guys this for you to quit giving. Because you quit giving and you, you're going you're to quit receiving blessings. Bottom line. I'm telling you guys this because you need to be realized that in Christ we have liberty. We have free. We're no longer a captive. We're no longer held in bondage, y'all. That's when Paul told the, told the believers, you know, it doesn't matter what day you worship on no more. We're not held under that law no more. You understand what I'm saying? That was repeated. That was repeated. It, when, when people bit a big fight about, you got to go to church on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. And Paul said, no, they each one, no, 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 no one regard to you which day of worship. That was repeated. You see what I'm saying? That was repeated. And, and so, so we, we have to come to that understanding, y'all. So what I want you to do right now, I had to give you this disclaimer because I want, I want you to get your mind right. I want you to be prayerfully ready to receive what you're about to receive. And the, I, it's a link below. It's from Dr. John MacArthur, who is one of the most respected, most revered, most honored ministers of our generation today. You, you can pretty much quiz uh, any, any pastor and they will tell you they listen to John MacArthur or they're familiar with John MacArthur and his doctrine is sound. Dr. John MacArthur, they listen to his sermon, they haven't, he hasn't taught tithing of his people since the 1970s. He teaches giving and, and, and his ministry has flourished more, more than anything else. He teaches free will giving, which the Word of God teaches us to do. Free will giving. You give and each one has it in his heart. That's how you give. Because God said he loves a cheerful giver. He wants you to be, he didn't want you to feel bound to 10%. He don't want you to feel that you're stuck in this box. He don't want you to feel these rules that if I don't, you know, if you don't have 10% to give this week, if you got this, it's, it's two percent of your income, then the next week you can give 30%. It, you know what I'm, saying? See what I'm saying? You give freely. You give freely, and that's what you do. So click on this link below the video. Go here, or uh, or you can go to my blog. I'm gonna put both there. I'm gonna put the website to my blog where I wrote about this, as well, plus the link. Actually, yeah, click on my. Uh, my blog link. I think I'm going to put that on here. Click on the blog link. Once you go to the blog link, you, you see the blog, you read it, scroll down a little bit. I'm going to have the options in there for you to go and download the, the sermon. Listen to that sermon. Write down the scriptures and study those scriptures. And ask God to teach you the, the, the truth. Ask God to show you. So God, this is your word. This is true. Show me. You, you're going to be startled what you're about to find out and what the tithe word was and, and what free will offering is. You're going to be surprised and what you're about to find out. Now, I'm happy to share this with you guys. So go ahead and check it out. Click on the link below the video right now. It's going to take you to my blog. Then you're going to scroll down a little bit in that blog. Click on that link. It's going to take you right to where you can listen to the sermon. From my